Hi everyone, my name is Marcelino. Hello, my name is Faleha. Hey guys, I'm Omar, and today we are going to showcase a project that we have done for top interns. During the bootcamp phase, the interns develop projects for top interns. The administration at top interns then showcases this, these projects on their website. The task for creating this page was being done manually. As you can see here, the project pages were static HTML or CSS pages. Our job was to create a CMS dashboard system which would allow the administrator to insert information about these projects into the database system through a form. As you can see here, without having to insert the information about each project manually. Now, the dashboard system allows you to view, edit, and delete projects, which makes this process more dynamic and user-friendly. To implement this project, we met the front-end team and we decided to use React for the front-end and Node.js for the back-end. For the database, we decided to, to go with Amazon's NoSQL DynamoDB. We used a serverless approach in which an API gateway triggers a Lambda function to access the data in DynamoDB. To create this project, first we needed to collect all database fields required, define the database access patterns, then define the API endpoints. After that, we created the Swagger documentation for the endpoints. Then we created our unit tests before jumping into code. For this project, we only have one entity, that is the project page. And this entity will require a heading for the title of the project and some other information we needed like the URL of the logo and the company name. Since it's a NoSQL database design, each item can have different number of attri attributes. We have listed here a comprehensive list of all the attributes that can be filled up on the form page. Of these, the heading, company name, project type, and summary are required attributes for all items. Next comes the access patterns. That is how the users, here being the reader and the writer, access the data to satisfy the business need. The readers need to get a list of one project as well as the details of all projects. The writer needs to perform operations on the project entity, like create a new project, update a project, and delete a project. Since we have just one entity, that is the project entity. This will be our choice for the partition key, PK. Next, we need to access each individual project in the project partition. So our sort key will be project hash project name. For example, here we have given project hash Twitter clone. Going further, if there is a need to list down the projects done by a particular batch, we need a global secondary index to query the database based on the batch number. So here we have GSI1PK as project and GSI1SK as project hash batch number. As you can see, project hash batch 8. Based on the access patterns, each one will be mapped to an API endpoint. So we have designed five API endpoint listed now. Get projects to get the list of all projects. Get project to get an information about single project. And similarly, we used create, update, or delete a project using the methods post, put, and delete. So now what is Swagger? Swagger is a set of rules for a format describing the REST APIs. Now with the API endpoints defined already, we created a Swagger documentation to list down all the APIs along with the input and output parameters. The response code for each API were also decided based on the output. This Swagger will be used by the front end and the back end team to share documentation. Let's have a look at the Swagger documentation now. This is the Swagger documentation for the top interns project pages API. 
Each API was designed with the required request parameters and response data. Let's take an example. The endpoint get project will show the response with the status code and an object which is formatted in JSON. As that is how the backend expects the data from the front end and vice versa. Docker is essentially a toolkit that enables developers to build, deploy, run, and update containers using simple commands. Let's have a look at the Docker file we created. This file is named Docker file, and it is used to create the Node.js image that will then be used by our container. Next, we created a Docker compose file. This file is used to set the configuration of our containers, where we specify the images we want to use, the commands to run inside these containers, and the ports we want to expose from inside our containers. After building our container, we can see the containers running in Docker. Here you can see that this is our Node.js server running here, and this is our DynamoDB running, and both are running inside our container. In this project, we have used the model view controller architecture or MVC for short. MVC is an architectural pattern that separates an application into three main logical components, the model, the view, and the controller. Each of these components are built to handle specific development aspects of an application. The model is responsible for managing the data of the application. It receives user input from the controller. The view will be rendered through ReactJS. The controller responds to the user input and performs interactions on the data model object. Let's talk about the database now. First, we needed to create the DB tabletop interns that we, have, we had designed for our project. We needed to specify the attributes, the partition key PK, SK, and GSIs when creating the table initially. These are the only the attributes that you need to specify at the time of table creation. Here is the code for creating the table. As you can see, hash refers to the partition key and range refers to the sort key. Similarly, we specify the global secondary index PK and SK while creating the table. Let's take a look at the sample data now that will be inserted as an item in the database. The data is in the JSON format as they will receive it in that format from the front end. We have used a TDD approach for our project. TDD means test driven development. And it is a software development practice that focuses on creating unit test cases before developing the actual code. It is an interactive approach that combines programming, the creation of unit tests, and refactoring. So, first we have created the unit test cases based on the DynamoDB repository functions. Here is our database repository class. This class is used to access our database to manipulate the data. We use this file to perform query functionality and single item requests using the partition key and the sort key. As for the TDD approach that we have mentioned, we used super test and just modules to write our test cases to test our API endpoints. Here I am going to show you an example of how we used Postman application. To test one of our API endpoints, I am going to demonstrate to you the post endpoint. Here we are adding a barrier token in the request header to authorize our request. In the request body, we are sending the data as a JSON object, just as we expect it from the front end. When we click on send, we are testing to see if our project is created and we will receive a response with a status code that will indicate, as shown, a successful insertion or a failed one. For the deployment phase, we use the serverless approach. Serverless is a cloud-native development model 
that allows developers to build and run applications without having to manage servers. So by using this service, you don't have to worry about managing the system and infrastructure. That part will be done by the company offering this service. So we have created a handler.js file to handle the events and a serverless YAML file, which is a configuration file for AWS Lambda functions. In this file, we use the serverless offline plugin which emulates the AWS Lambda and API gateway on our local machine to speed up our development cycles, where the provider is the AWS. This was a brief about our project implementation. Let's see a quick demo of this project.